Hey, this is CD Detail. I'm Chris. This is Tony, and this is MMA for You. We're going to be doing our post fight analysis for UFC Fight Night 26, Sun In versus Shogun. Oh, uh, overall, man, what did, what did you think of the card? It's a fun card. Yeah. With the exception of maybe one fight, this was a solid fights from beginning to end. Yeah, exactly. And that one fight being what? <laughs> Howard versus Hall? Exactly. When two strikers try and grapple. Uh, bad things happen. Bad things happen. Oh, bad fights happen. Boo. And then bad judging happens. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that later, but uh, yeah. wow. Yeah. A uh, s- s- couple surprises here. Like uh, some good knockouts here. Some good submissions here. Uh, oh, <laughs> submission of the uh, unexpected submission of the night. Yeah. Well, maybe Michael McDonald's, <laughs> but I don't know. Um, yeah. Let's get started. Okay. So chill. The American Gangster Summit <laughs> defeated Mauricio Shogun Hua by uh, guillotine choke in the first round. Wow, who would have saw that coming? <laughs> I don't. You know what? He did submit Brian Stan, so I knew he had offensive. But that, but that's ability. that's what Stan off is on his back. This is Sonnen going out of his way to do a guillotine and put himself on his back. I mean, this is bad positioning if he didn't get the submission. Yeah. But then again, I guess that's sort of Sonnen like. I don't know, not, not really threatened by Shogun's uh, yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you wouldn't be doing that if you were a fighter or a high caliber wrestler. You wouldn't dare pull that. Exactly. I mean, Shogun managed to get on top of uh, Sun and didn't do anything. Uh, with yeah, it. well, I think he just he just used uh, Sunin's momentum because it, it didn't. Yeah. Most of it was Sunin's doing. Yeah, and it just. Even when he did it, he did nothing yeah. with it. He would just lie on top. And, yeah, exactly. And so Sonnen the, got positioned and got right back up. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's no reason for him not to do the guillotine because of that. You yeah, know, exactly. Like, and that's the thing. You know, because a lot of people are, are saying, like, who has got a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, great leg locks, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And, uh, you know... You wouldn't be able to tell in this fight. I mean, the fact of the matter is, I remember calling the... Um, the predictions and, and and speaking of predictions, seven out of six just did okay. <laughs> Two out of six of the main card, not great overall, not terrible, but not great. There you go, not terrible. <laughs> yeah, but um, one thing one thing else was with Shogun and his UFC career. One, he's looked past his prime ever oh, since yeah. forever. <laughs> no kidding. And two, he has been taken down by every guy he spawned in the UFC. Pretty much. I can't think of anybody that hasn't taken him down. Yeah. Chuck Liddell managed to. Uh, Coleman, Forrest Griffin, Machida, Brandon Vera, I believe. Jeez. Yeah. All these guys managed at least to take him down once. So, Holy moly. Yeah. Uh, check it out. Can't believe freaking Sunday was the underdog then. Yeah, oh, hey, that it's was... It's one of yeah. those hindsight 2020 things. It's like, now that you say it now, it's like, yeah. I can't imagine anyone picking Sh- uh, Shogun. Well, that's cool that you mentioned that, because now on this uh, Fox Force 1, that was kind of cool that they shared the Vegas odds. That was cool. Yeah. I thought that was really... Well, those are the betting persuasion. <laughs> yeah. I think, well, it also just goes to show who's the favorite to win the fight. That's true. General, I'll give you that as well. A general consensus, Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, what do you think of uh, Sonnen's post-fight call-out, huh? <laughs> well, I can't blame him for wanting that Vanderlei fight. I mean, after going through Shogun, let's face it, of the two, I think Shogun's the better fighter, especially at yeah. this point in his career, mm-hmm. and he, he just ran right through him. Dude, yeah, man. I mean, the first seconds, double leg takedown, and it was just... And if you you're Sonnen, you want to do big business, and Vanderlei's the guy you want to do it with. Yeah. Someone who you could just, you know, easily smoke... Yeah. And someone who you could just, you know, yeah. if you're sunning, you're just waiting to see what happens at 185 before you decide to drop down. Yeah. And in the meantime, why not try to uh, get fight. that get that big money fight? Exactly. That's a big money fight. The other money fight for Sun and that I not a guy, Brazilian that's been calling him out, is okay. Vitor Belfort. Ooh. Um, and that fight could happen if he indeed goes back to 185. And See, I, see if, if Weedman beats Silva again, mm-hmm. I would book that fight. Mm. But right now, I don't, I don't know if I'd book that fight. Because if Sonnen wins and mm. Silva wins, mm-hmm. you you're, you have a lose-lose scenario. Because you've been building v- Vitor up with a bunch of these well, wins. Why, what, what, here's the thing. Vitor's fought at 205. That's true. Why not do it at 205? It just would look really bad. I mean, and I know if they've done this with Sonnen and other fighters where they come off a loss. But mm-hmm. Vitor, I mean, it's a little harder to justify giving him a t- shot at 185. Even though... You could conceivably lose to Sonnen at 205, and mm-hmm. you could still conceivably get away with that fight at 185, but it's like, why would you want to do it? Uh, for the money. <laughs> but no, no, Vanderlei makes more sense. I don't know, I don't know if Vitor's really that 
Yeah. I don't know if you do that well with uh, Sonnen. Yeah, uh, well enough. I mean, I think Vanderlei is a better, the better oh, option. Oh, certainly, now. yeah. The better option, but, uh, yeah. So, well, I'm starting to recall Vitor's, uh, what was it, when he knocked out, um... Knocked out Bisping? Bisping and Rock. Well, yeah, the guy, can, the guy can do an interview, but uh, I'm just yeah. saying... From the grand scheme, if anything, I try to protect Vitor at 185. Because yeah. especially if Silva wins, you yeah. don't want to try to, you know, sell a rematch with Silva after the first fight went, and then mm-hmm. him coming off a loss to Sunday at 205. I just think at this point you want to protect. Oh, well, yeah. If, you, if you're just saying about uh, a that's why I've heard. The, I've heard the fight rumor that uh, Vitor may fight uh, Rashad mm-hmm. Evans at 185. Now I like that fight considerably better. I heard uh, the there's a lot of rumors. There's Vitor <laughs> Ashley versus Machida at 185. Uh, I, I know uh, why they want that fight for a Brazilian market, but yeah. uh, if you're trying to set, it, I mean, Vitor is pretty much clean house on 185. So I figure th- this is the best time to try to get him a title shot because really, there's nobody else really at 185 that's really ready for a title shot unless you could think of someone else. Uh, well, if Michael Bisping beats Mark Munoz, they've been wanting. <laughs> well, they've been wanting to get Michael Bisping a title shot one eighty five forever, and you know they. I lost all faith in the guy after he lost to Vitor. I mean, th- yeah. there's no shame losing to Vitor. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like after that loss, you know, the guy's never really going to be a contender. Yeah. Well, if they safely get him, and you, they you, they you can, really think you really think he's going to beat uh, Munoz? Maybe why not? <laughs> Good takedown defense. The only thing about about uh, Bisbing that he, that's really bad, he doesn't hit hard, but he has great <laughs> he has great cardio and really strong takedown defense. Yeah, I mean, and a huge great output when he when he hits. It, he's actually a bad stylistic matchup for a lot of guys. Mm. To be honest with you, um, but yeah, there's some, there's some interesting fights involving Chill here. Shogun, I mean, at this point, mo- whatever money fights you can get against, like Rashad Evans or... Um, I don't know what money fights you could do with the guy. Dude, uh, another fight with Nogueira, like Little no- Nogueira. Yeah, actually, you know, but Nogueira's, Nogueira's on, on the way up. I don't know if you want to do that fight, especially if you're Nogueira. I uh, might as well. Have to. Well, I also you do like Shogun versus giving one to new guys like Phil Davis or like Glover <laughs> Teixeira. Might as well. I mean, like, honestly, his role at this point is like... Kingmaker. Yeah, as a kingmaker, you know. That's fine. That, that's I mean, he's past his prime. Let's face no facts. kidding. <laughs> let's face facts. He's been past his prime for a while. I love the guy, but let's face facts. Just do a rematch with Henderson already. Yeah, there we go. okay, that works too. No, <laughs> no. that works too. Yeah. <laughs> might as well. Yeah. Henderson is like uh, far away from a title shot. Right? So he might as well. Yeah. It's, it seems that uh, come to think of it, that's just that's common sense bugging. Yeah, you can do that too. So yeah, exactly. That's a money fight right there. Yeah, I, I would like that one. I may have to make a phone call after this show. <laughs> well, next right after that, we have uh, Travis Brown beating Alistair Overeem with a front snap kick to the face and follow-up punches uh-huh. in the first round. Very uh, interesting. Uh, yeah. What do you make of that? Uh, you know, okay, like I said, naturally you want to assume, oh, you want to, I mean, Alistair Overeem is not the nicest guy in the world. He's not the mm. most humble guy in the world. So yeah. I watch him lose. After all this hype, it's like part yeah. of you, part of you wants this. Like I guess, as far as today, you 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 revel in it, but you know, as far as maybe a big championship fight, you know, the guy could have you know pushed. He could have, he could have justified a lot of buy rates. Yeah, exactly. And now, have you seen the guy? He looks like a freaking comic book character. Yeah, but, then, <laughs> but and here, but here's the thing. He lost, but he didn't really lose all that bad. I mean, he did, it was fantastic. He was, you know, he was on the verge of a victory. If it wasn't for Mario Yamasaki giving Travis Brown that second, uh, I mean, he could have he could have called the fight the end right there, and it would have yeah. been totally justified. Yeah, exactly. So credit to Mario Yamasaki to let the fight continue, because man, Brown just came back yeah. with a vengeance. Well, it's something of vengeance because he, it wasn't like he he went all Antonio Silva and started to just freaking. Throw, you no, know, he was on the brink of defeat, and he yeah. came back. That's yeah. that's got to be worth something. Yeah. One thing about Overeem, man, it, it's his lo- two losses in the UFC are really embarrassing losses. The it, first, the first one, the yeah. Silver losses. The second one, you know, it's a big deal because I guess they 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 did a lot to try to get the guy. Mm-hmm. And he's not really pulling his weight, but at the same time, it's like, can you really fault the guy for losing this fight? I mean, he was doing really good. I mean, I understand sure. he, he's coming in with a lot of hype, mm-hmm. and if there was anybody else, you would just say, hey, 
the guy was looking awesome, and you know what? It just wasn't his night. Yeah, like, but the fact like, of the matter is, yeah, you're right. He had this big hype machine behind him. You yeah. know, he had all the momentum in the world, and it's like he, this was kind of a must-win fight for him. Yeah, exactly. As far as staying within the elite, as far as staying in title contention, yeah, this is a big fight for him. He's 33 years old. He's yeah. chinny as hell. Um, <laughs> I mean, pulling uh, out the horse meat. <laughs> yeah, I. I don't even know if it's hard. Like, on a technical level, he's really good. His knees are really good. He does have a good ground game. He hits hard. He's technically sound. He's, yeah, he's a great fighter, but the fact of the matter is he had a world of hype behind him. I'm not sure, and I'm sure he didn't come cheap Didn't come cheap either. So no, no, not at all. I'm sure the UFC is furious with, with Alistair right now. Sure, sure. And, and the thing with our Reim, the thing is, uh, like, his weakness is really have in the cage really haven't been fixed his mm -hmm. cardio is still really bad I mean he lost essentially by standing in front of Travis Brown <laughs> and a more or less telegraphed head kick I mean yeah the, the whole night he was throwing that that front yeah. kick I mean it was a more or less telegraphed front snap kick he was throwing just, that five or six times. I mean, yeah. obviously, you know, Alistair blocked a couple with with his hands, but still, he was throwing that thing all night. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you stand in front of the guy. That's the other thing too. He's a plotter. Um, he's not. He's not big on movement. Um, you know, he's chinny. So there, there's a lot of things about Overeem that, and it sucks because I'm a big fan that have not been fixed. Even though he's fighting the UFC, that he probably probably won't get fixed in his MMA career. To be perfectly honest, he can't fix a chin, but he can probably fix cardio. Oh yeah, for sure. And that you know that didn't go well for him. <laughs> Not at all. Um, Not yeah. any stretch of the imagination. You know, I, and I, I would argue that Overeem might be the biggest bust in the UFC outside of, like, maybe Mirko Krokop. You know, what do you think? I don't think that level, because Mirko has never looked this competitive at a high level, so mm -hmm. I think I think you're getting a little carried away. Mm -hmm. But I, just, I understand the sentiment. It's like, yeah, he, they, UFC had big plans for this guy, and mm -hmm. he's kind of floundered in the UFC. Yeah. I mean, he came out great. He wiped the floor with Brock. Oh, yeah, he wiped the floor with Brock. But even there, there's an asterisk because of the uh, elevated testosterone level. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure, these, the I'm sure. these two losses and then all the headaches of having to put up with yeah. him and all this testosterone, I, I'm sure he hasn't done himself any favors, with, especially yeah. with this recent loss. Yeah. Maybe, you know, the word biggest might be the wrong word, but he, you would you say he's a bust. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. Yeah. Especially, if, like I said, for all the headaches they've had to put it with the, the TRT and then just him just essentially throwing that Bigfoot fight when he had it right. won. And throwing this fight almost. Uh, <laughs> well, not throwing, but, you know, just like... It, how would you explain it? Just winning the fight and then losing spectacularly. You know <laughs> what I mean? It's, I don't know about throwing it, obviously, but, you know, losing when it really counts and losing in... Well, and he wasn't, like, the first fight when he yeah. lost because of his hubris. This is just his skills. Yeah. Or, la yeah. or, or lack, lack of the thereof, yeah. Or lack of cardio, yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so... What's next for Travis Brown, though? I don't know. With this big win, I mean... He's right there up there, because I think he's, what, ranked number six? Yeah, he's ranked number six, and before this... Uh, Jeez, who did he beat? He beat uh, Gonzaga before this. Yeah. Actually, and he knocked him out. And now he knocked out Overeem. Um, you know, I'm kind of think I, Right now, like, the guys... You know, the Junior Dos Santos is going to fight uh, Cain Velasquez. Yeah. You know, and the winner of that has to get someone. Verdun is the one that's next in Verdun line. Verdun is the names that have been floating around. And I don't blame yeah. him. I would have gone with that. Yeah. Or else, what do you think of a number one contender fight between Brown and Verdun? Or do you not uh, want to kill a contender? I don't want to kill a contender. And especially, I mean, of the two, I would want to predict predict Verdun because of the mm -hmm. two, he's a bigger draw. <clears throat> and yeah. coming off that big Noguera fight, it's like, if I, if I was UFC and Verdum, I would just hold off <clears throat> and wait for a championship fight. Mm. What would I do with Brown? I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, maybe do a rematch with Bigfoot. Maybe put him against uh, maybe Mark Hunt. I don't know. Yeah, but if you put him against Mark Hunt, maybe there's a chance of him getting knocked out. What about him versus the winner of Barnett versus Mir? Uh, I think at this point, 
Mm, I don't know, because it's like, do you really want to really... Well, let's, so let's say Mir wins. Okay, I don't think he will. Mir, at this point, honestly, isn't <laughs> much of a title contender. I mean, he kind of loses against a certain level of guy. Yeah, I just feel like, well, I just feel like Brown's an up-and-comer, and he could be a future contender, and it's like, why do you want to put him in there against a guy who's a, essentially, at this point, a journeyman who has no chance of ever being... Uh, you're getting a tower shot again, probably. Well, either I, man, to be honest. I mean, well, they're top ten heavyweights, but let's be honest, neither man is really ever going to get a tower shot. Yeah, but does that ma- But in regards of name value, with up and comers, what you'd really want then is to beat names, whether they're journeymen or not. I'd um, rather that he thing. just lose against guys, at least guys that may be on the way up, or at least guys that are have at least been close to the top. Mm-hmm. Whereas I mean you could I mean you could justify a loss to someone like that. Well, it's like well he's a young kid he's still coming up and it's like he just fought a guy who's gonna he just lost to a guy who lost to the guy who's gonna challenge for the title. At least you could sort of justify it by saying there's a ceiling. Whereas if you lose to Mir, it's like you lost to a top ten heavyweight. That's great, but a guy who's never really gonna be in the championship picture again. It's like I'd rather that you lose to a guy who's in that title picture. Okay, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. I'm... I, yeah. Better that you I, lose to another fellow contender than a guy who's just floundering in the division. I see well, what I don't you know mean. if is right, but just a, t- a top guy who's never going to... Uh, you know, whose championship days are pretty much over. Yeah. I see what you mean. I'm, um... But then that also raises the question, if you can't beat a Frank Mayer, what are you doing trying to fight a Cain Velasquez? That's true. I'll give you that as well. You know what I mean? That's and cool. stylistically, it actually would be a good fight, too. Yeah. Or even a Barnett, that's the thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so interesting uh, stuff for uh, Brown. Man, did it cut over him after this or not? No, not at all. Yeah. I think he's too, still way too big a star. And especially, I don't mm-hmm. know if Bellator would necessarily want to go after him because he probably would be expensive. Mm-hmm. Well, then again, well, if you're Alistair, where else would you go? Uh, just one FC. The other thing is, it doesn't. The thing with Bellator is they're backed by Viacom, so Viacom fits a bell. Mm. That's so like way. like if anything I maybe wish want to hold on to maybe one more one more fight. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'd give him one more fight against maybe an up and comer or like someone with a name. Um, maybe the winner or loser of Burnett versus Mia. <laughs> yeah, I can see so, that as well. That because yeah, that that makes. Or you could do uh, Mark Hunt battle the K one champions. <laughs> yeah, Overham's already beaten Hunt, but oh, Hunt, has he now? Mm-hmm. Oh. But uh, that's why you're here, Chris, to tell us stuff like this. <laughs> but the thing is, like uh, Hunt, actually, he that was bef- that was within his like six fight losing streak, mm-hmm. and after that, he had the four fight win streak. So huh. it's it's like not one Hunt. It's not the Hunt that fought like Junior Dos Santos yeah, okay. or something, or like. Hunt lost, but he looked pretty good, like good enough considering he fought. Okay, okay, no, I like you said, yeah, definitely the Hunt would the be partner, or uh, yeah. me or winner. Hunt would actually make some sense, actually. <laughs> I think about it. Okay, next one after that, Uriah Faber beat Yuri Alcantara by a uh, unanimous decision. Huh? Yeah. Uh, one of them was a thirty twenty two scorecards was thirty twenty six. <laughs> I actually gave Yuri Alcantara the first round, to be perfectly honest. Ah, uh, no one blame you. Yeah, but uh, but I can but I can see Favor getting that round too. He did more yeah, damage. Yeah, he he, finished, he did really fin- he finished that round really strong. Yeah, and, and yeah, and he did more. Da- it, it's like damage versus control. Yeah, exactly. You know? That's the they're both right. You mean you 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 could you know justify both, but it's like mm-hmm. that's why I don't I don't uh I don't smirch you for pick, for picking yeah. for that first round anyway. Yeah. So, um, do you think uh, Alcantara acquitted himself well against Faber uh, at the very least? He what now? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, acquit. You know, like looked good even in defeat. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Especially in that first round, he just came out the gates and just took the fight to Faber. Yeah. I mean, I, I for one thought he was, he was going to walk away with a win. Yeah. Because yeah. just right out the gate, he had Faber on the defense, and it's like, wow, I think he's going to finish Faber in the first round. Yeah. Because Faber was in a lot of trouble in that first round. Yeah, he got his back taken. One thing about Alcantara, too, is that he is really tricky on the ground and in <laughs> grappling. I mean, just seriously. I mean, even when Faber was in control, there wasn't much he could do with the guy. Yeah. I mean, he got him against the cage. He wasn't laying down some ground and pound. But it wasn't like, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't fight ending. Yeah, it wasn't fight ending. Yeah. 
I mean, the thing with Alcantara, though, I mean, I remember, like, another sequence, I think in the first round, when Faber did take it to the ground, and he lands into a triangle. You know, <laughs> I mean, and that's how tricky this guy is. Yeah, exactly. And then he mentioned that he may have broke Faber, uh, Alcantara may have broken Faber's jaw. Um, you know, because his stand-up, he, he's a Muay Thai guy, as, long, as well as a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Um... But, you know, with Faber, I mean, he's the guy that keeps being everyone but the champ. <laughs> you know? Um, he's got to be hell if you're, like, if you're on the cusp of a title shot, the last person you probably want to fight is Faber. Exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, does Faber move to 145? Does he fight the Frankie Eggers and get I don't those think fights? I think we were talking about it during the fight that, uh, I mean, he's not going to get a title shot anytime soon because if, if, when Cruz comes back, we all know... Um, Cruz Burrell. Burrell's getting that first crack at Cruz. Yeah, and that's what, what February. Yeah, and if you're yeah. and if you're if you're Faber, you're you're on a world's momentum. I mean, I mean, anybody else conceivably would have got a title shot, but the fact of the matter is, Faber, you got that double-edged sword of yeah, you're a big draw. Yeah, everybody likes you, but at the same time, your detractors, you know, they they have made made a case that in the before that he has got a title shot really quick in the division, mm -hmm. and at this point in his career. It's hard to justify him getting a title shot at this point, and there's like I said, he has those detractors because he is so popular. Mm -hmm. But if I was Faber, yeah, I maybe would want to go to 145 because even if I do lose at 145, I could still conceivably go back to 135 and get a title shot. Yeah, exactly. Because at this point, why would you risk that 135 shot if <clears throat> if you're on just gigantic roll and? You're going to blow it for what? I mean, who's really left in the division to fight? Now, here's the other thing, too. If he goes to 145 and, and hypothetically fights Frank Edgar and loses, mm -hmm. I mean, would you give him a title shot coming off a loss, or would he need one, one fight at 135, get a win, and then get a title shot? You may have those detractors that may try to uh, take some win out of those sales, but I get to the feeling after the Burrell, uh cruise fight, I mean... Especially if, if th there's also the scenario, what's if he beats Frankie? Yeah, it's and then if he beats Frankie, do you do you try to oh, well then again, would you want to give him another match with Aldo? I mean, of the two, nah. could conceivably he could probably beat Cruz. He probably has the easier chance of beating well, Cruz. Yeah, here's a here's a cool here's the thing. Like he can c conceivably beat Cruz, and the the other thing is too. I think more people would want to see Faber Cruz. Oh yeah, tr the trilogy than a rematch against Burrell yeah. where he lost all five rounds. Yeah, exactly. At least when he fought Cruz the second time, I think he took like one or two. I know he took one round and, and possibly two rounds. Yeah, he was competitive. Yeah, he was very competitive. Dropped him actually a couple times. Um, he still so, lost, but he would. I mean, he went toe to toe with Cruz. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And considering that Cruz is coming off ACL injury... Yeah, you don't uh, know if the guy's going to be the same, too. It's yeah. like... A guy who's based on movement... Yeah, speed. And speed, it, you know, coming off ACL injury, fighting Burrell in his first <laughs> fight back... <laughs> yeah, that's going to be kind of tough. Um, it's tough to say what to do with uh, your right favor, but what do you think about a match with him... And the guy who got the triangle choke earlier of the night, Michael McDonald. Mm. See, I don't know if I like that fight, because I don't know Michael McDonald... Like I said, if he beats Faber, yeah, it's fantastic for him. But at the same time, it's like, do you want him losing to Faber? He's 22 years old. He actually, before Pickett, he lost to Burrell already. Oh, okay. So he, ha he did already have his uh, title shot. It's not a guy that's coming up for the first time. It's a guy who's already had a title shot. But it's a guy who could conceivably one day be a champion. I don't know if you yeah. want to have him... I mean, it, it wouldn't be bad, but at this point... I mean, mm -hmm. the guy's the guy's obviously, you know, that championship caliber athlete. I don't know if you want to have him lose again, maybe, potentially. Yeah. Because with favor, yeah, it's... it's You can could conceivably go both ways. Mm -hmm. He could beat favor, but then also favor could beat him. Yeah, of course. But, yeah. And what would favor? I mean, really, what would favor get out of, out of winning though? Uh, maybe it does <laughs> have, well, maybe the winner of Burrell versus Cruz. Hmm? That's the thing. Because if you have a four fight win streak, uh, yeah, by that it's, time, it's five points. Yeah, mm -hmm. I hear what you're saying. It's undeniable. Yeah, it's undeniable. Even his detractors would have to be like, yeah, he's won four fights. Yeah, might as well give him a title shot. It, it would be a number one contender fight. 
Uh, the only other reason why I say that is because he's pretty much beaten every 135 that I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know, he beat Jorgensen, he beat Menjavar. I mean, he's going to fight guys like Rafael Sunsau and, like, Mike Easton and, and maybe Brad Pickett, even though he's coming off a loss, just yeah. because, like, I don't know who else you can give the guy. Yeah. That's he he really is a, a tricky predicament. Yeah. And without Contra, you know, just... Uh, he can fight at a high level. I'd like to see him fight more of the top guys at 135 despite coming off this loss. So, yeah. yeah. Next fight after that, we have Matt the Immortal Brown beating the guy whose hair you didn't like, Mike no! San Pyle. By a KO. I usually like mullets. It's just his. I don't know what. Just set me off. I just hated it. 29 seconds of the first round. Ooh. So, <sighs> Matt Brown is a guy who got. In a what three or four fight losing streak, <laughs> I think all of them are by submission, and now he's on a five or six fight win streak with Jeez. only one of those fights in that win streak being a decision. Mm. What's up with Mike? <laughs> what, what, where, where, where do we put the guy? Is he still the journey? Is he still a journeyman that he he was when he came to the UFC? I mean. How hard is it to get the perception that, hey, maybe this guy isn't a mid-tier guy anymore, you know? Yeah, especially with, what, you said the fourth or fifth win now? This is like, uh, I want to say, I think it's the fourth. No, 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 fifth. This is the fifth. Jeez. It's fifth, uh, fifth one in a row. No, 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 six, my bad. <laughs> it's Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a six. Because uh, he beat Jordan Mean before this. By by strikes, and then he beat my car. He knocked him out. Yeah, six. <laughs> I think he's on a six fight one streak. Holy moly! And, uh, and only one of those fights went to decision. Jeez. Yeah. So maybe he wasn't so preposterous of him calling out GSP then. Yeah. Well, <laughs> him saying that piles better than GSP was a bit preposterous. Hey. If you're in that position, you, you try your best to get a title shot. If you have to stretch the truth, by all means do it. I wish more fighters did it. Yeah, man. I mean, coming from a pro wrestling background, I mean, Sonnen calls out Vanderlei in the way that he does. Mm -hmm. Dude. Oh, yeah. People... Forbade him Superstar Billy Graham promo. Yeah. I mean, how's mouthing the... Uh, the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, how's mouthing the freaking uh, yeah. uh, interview he was doing? Because I'm like, I know all of these. I've seen this before. I'm like, that man's always been watching his Superstar uh, Billy Graham videos. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, but yeah, Matt Brown, he needs a top 10 guy next. Oh, that's with, for sure. without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, and even if he loses, there's no shame. It's like, yeah. the guy's obviously, he's probably never going to be cut by UFC. At yeah. least not f for the foreseeable future. I mean, the guy, like you said, he's a journeyman. He can just, he'll just, I mean, he'll, maybe, I don't know if he'll ever be a top 10 guy, but he's always going to be there. He's probably in the top 10 now. Uh, yeah, after this yeah, run. it's kind of hard to deny at this point. Yeah. yeah. I, I, think well, I don't see him yet ever getting past it. Yeah. Past this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I mean, they can give him some like a Robbie Lawler. That'll be a fun fight. Uh, may, maybe a Roy McDonald. I mean, it's kind of mm. high up there. I say that only because Roy McDonald and GSP have this like, oh, we're not going to fight each other thing. So you kind of have to give Roy McDonald guys that won't. You know. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like you want to put them in. Yeah, I would. I would put them with guys that even if he lost to, you could conceivably. Oh well, it's okay. It's he's but, a top guy. But like, I don't know if you want to put him in there with Matt Brown, who could conceivably be. I mean, what is what does Roy McDonald have? But here's the problem: okay. all the top guys are pretty much up and comers at this point. Uh -huh. Terry Safdie. Johnny Hendricks. I mean, there isn't that guy that's like been there for a while. He's top like like a, there's no Frank Mears, you know. Mm. And if there is, I totally forgot if there are. You know? <laughs> I mean, that's the thing because Roy McDonald's just in this really weird predicament. He doesn't want to fight GSP, but he just come off that big win over Jake Allenberger, and he still need to give him fights. Oh, you can go with him and Condit, I suppose. Oh, the, the winner of uh, Condon and Cam. Yeah, I suppose. You can get, like, Roy or Matt Brown, one of those guys. Yeah. You know. You can give Roy the winner and the loser to Matt Brown. Yeah. Something like that. That actually works. Um, yeah, but Matt Brown, the surprising, really surprising story with this guy. I mean, 
like I said, huge losing streak. <laughs> uh, most of his losses are by submission, and then he actually hold up that game. He's actually a pretty strong uh, offensive uh, submission threat at this point. Yep. And his standoff is, is vicious. I mean, the guy just goes after you <laughs> and punches. What you. was it? Twenty nine second. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the guy's got a good good stand up. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Pyro was actually in the same place that Matt Brown was. He was actually on a three or four fight win streak, despite being in his late 30s. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just back down for him. He Mike Pyro's always been that guy that's a gatekeeper, you know, just testing prospects and beating mid-tier guys. Yep. Uh, Don't shame him that, though. Yeah. Get a job in the UFC for Mike <laughs> that way, you know. Okay, next fight after that, John Howard beat uh, Uriah Hall by split decision. I don't care who won and lost this fight. Or actually, I don't care who won this fight because they both lost. They did, but I mean, how atrocious is a 30-27 for John Howard? That's true. That That is kind of atrocious uh, scoring. And, uh, man, you really got to imagine what fight they were watching. I mean, it, sure, yeah, it was a stinker. And like I said, if you're Uriah Hall... Mm -hmm. Yeah, he won the fight, but I wouldn't be protesting it because, like, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to fight for this win because it's like really the the first. If I if I was you, Paul, I just want to get away from this this loss or even just this fight in general because this was a horrible, terrible fight. It is, but this fight loss it is two losses in a row. He could be cut from the UFC. Ah, uh, but the, the, the UFC, like I said, we were talking about after the fight. I was like, I noticed that uh, Uriah Hall didn't have any sponsors. His only sponsor was UFC. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, that could work or, like I, I also said, he could also work to his disadvantages. Like, UFC probably expects a lot from the guy, but at the same time, when he delivers like this, it's got to be that double-edged sword where it's like, well... UFC mm. expected a lot from the guy, and he didn't deliver, and yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe they do cut him. I would maybe. give him definitely one more fight. I yeah. Know. I mean, you have a lot of cards, so I mean, you're going you're gonna to need a lot of guys, and your right hall is still a guy who you can show his highlights and get people excited for his yeah. fights. And, you know, even though this was a terrible fight overall, I mean, he was at, there were, like we were talking about, there's, he, the man's got potential. Yeah, he got yeah. You saw glimmers of great things, especially when he was throwing those kicks. Yeah, the kicks. He, he did this really cool, like, like jumped over his back thing. Uh, oh, combo uh, kick! Yeah, <laughs> did that. Yeah, did that. <laughs> uh, the thing, yeah, that's the thing with the Uriah Hall, though. You know, I, I think he should have won the fight. Uh, I didn't like how much high fiving he was giving John Howard, you know. And his lack of output in general, <laughs> you know, is it, very worrisome. He backs himself up against a cage a lot of times. Yeah. Um, I, you know, sometimes it, it, it's like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> you know? Uh, the other thing that, that's, it's a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, they're both strikers that tried to grapple on this fight. That's one of the reasons why this fight was so bad. Uh, yeah, I was expecting fireworks with this fight. Because yeah. both these guys are big time strikers and we got yeah. a grappling affair. <laughs> No, I mean, which really, I guess you shouldn't be surprised when you have like two, two strikers at this level uh, fighting against each other. They're, I guess naturally you assume they draw to see. They sort of, I mean, they're sort of at the same level as striking, mm -hmm. where at the, they kind of like cancel each other out, and the, it came down to grappling. Yeah, maybe. One thing maybe it was a matchmaking decision. I don't know. Yeah. One thing about Uriah Hall, he has been training at Rain MMA with Mark Munoz. Uh, doing a lot of wrestling and maybe he, you know he thought in his development hey this is a guy that I should try my new my new wrestling tricks on you know mm. that that could easily if you're, Uriah, if you're Uriah Hall and you're famous for knocking people out I don't know if you want to try to yeah, but that's what he did yeah you know what, whether or not like that's what he was thinking I mean that's what ended up happening that's true I mean the first thing he did was a takedown I gotta know he just like, Got to take down, and I'm like, wow, okay. Didn't do much with it, <laughs> which goes to show he still would need to work on his ground game. No kidding. Uh, but yeah, you know, there's a lot of hype behind this guy after the Ultimate Fighter. You know, then he lost to Calvin Gaslam. Yeah, and, uh, well, I mean, we were talking during the fight. I mean, you gotta wonder: is this the guy who just he's just kind of green, and he needs? To, I mean, he needs to be molded, or is he really just like I think you were saying? He's just rests on his laurels. He he just he does enough just to get by. Mm -hmm. He's got potential, but he's just a slacker. He doesn't really make the most of himself. Like I said, I I personally think it's a mental thing because that guy yeah. on the Ultimate Fighter was just running through people, and then 
for him to be to lose at the finals, I just I I thought of anything else that was a mental thing. Yeah, he choked. Yeah, pretty, pretty much it. Yeah, the thing with Hall too, man. Uh, I mean, he's kind of a bust, you know, at this point. Unless he can pick himself up, this, John Howard is not a guy you want to lose to. He's already been cut by the UFC once. He's a mid-tier guy at best. Yeah, exactly. And to lose to... Well, this wasn't really a loss. I mean, we we both admit, I mean... No, that's a loss. I mean, I mean yeah, on, on paper, but we all know uh, Hall won that fight. Yeah, but even then, it's just a bad fight, It's too. a bad win, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. So, like... But you don't want this on your record if you're a new up-and-coming guy to lose to, like... You know, there's respectable wins and respectful losses. No offense to John Howard. Seems like a cool guy, hard yeah, working guy. Yeah, I think you're saying Howard uh, did this fight on... Uh, he did the fight on short notice. Yeah. He usually fights up Walter Waite, and you can tell. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you <laughs> know, not, these men look like completely different... Uh, weight classes. Weight classes. Because yeah. uh, Hall just towered over him. Yeah. And even then, you know... He still didn't look great. And, and that's the thing with Leroy Hall. You know, th- this fight also... With a performance like this, you're not going to be on main cards. You know, you, you might be thrown in the I'd prelims. Give, yeah, first. I would definitely give him one more fight in the prelims. And if he yeah. flounders there, I, I would have no, I would have no reservations on cutting him. Yeah. Uh, another thing to note about this fight, too. Uriah Hall was the biggest favorite of this card ah. to win. And he still lost. Um, you know, so it could be a mental thing. Maybe there's too much pressure on the kid. You know, he's a good prospect. Skill wise, he's great, but there's something. Well, maybe here. you need to let him go. Uh, just yeah. fight outside the UFC, get more experience, and then then maybe he can come back and you can. Mm. Like I said, he, I, I like I said, the potential's there. There were glimmers of okay. greatness in him, but like I said, at this point in his career, I think he just. I don't know if it's a mental thing or it's a skills level thing, but at this point, he's not really. I don't know UFC caliber. Well. And the next fight, though, Michael Johnson saved his job as he got a <laughs> unanimous decision against Joe Ooh. Lozon. Oh, man, you know, I was, I will, I got to eat crow in this fight. I said, I've been saying throughout, like, geez, a whole month that this is on, like, message boards and whatnot, that, like, this is a bad stylistic for matchup for Johnson. Yeah. Lozon should win. Johnson lost his la- last fights through grappling. You know, Miles Jerry managed to take him down uh, and win. And then he, he got submitted by Reza Madotti. So I, I figured Joe Ozon, man, he, his ground game's awesome. He'll probably submit him or manage to get him down. And then Michael Johnson totally proved me wrong. <laughs> you know? I mean, uh, if the Black Zillions prove one thing. They do improve the striking of oh, the guys yeah. from, from Were the not for that, Mike, uh, my, uh, my, Michael, Johnson. Michael Johnson would not have won this fight because yeah. he looks fantastic in there with Joe Lozon. Yeah. He was he, just lining him up the entire fight. Yeah, man. And, and he's just a step faster. I mean, the thing with the Black Zone camp that I see that's wrong <laughs> is probably game planning. Um, game planning to one. They're grand, the guy, they're... Guys who fight other than them don't have the best ground game all the time. Um, so, but they're striking. Like, everyone's striking always in prison. And Michael Johnson, he was throwing some straight, some crosses that made their mark, found their mark on Lozon. He dropped Lozon like three times in the Yikes. first round, man. And you know, credit for Lozon. And Lozon couldn't take him down, too. That was even the, more, yeah. the most preposterous thing. Yeah. You know, um,. So, you know, just a good win for uh, Johnson because I, his job. I think he would have probably got cut after this. She, you know, and a win like this was just cool because, like, he was a good prospect. Um, you know, he was coming off a three-fight win streak, then a two-fight losing streak, and now he's coming off a, a good, a solid win over Joe Lozon. Joe yeah. Lozon's a good guy to uh, yeah, win over. no kidding. And, um... The thing is, you know, it, it still saves him as far as, like, being a prospect to look out for. Had he lost, it's like, okay, he's a bust. You know, he, he's not going to amount to anything. But then you see this fight, well, that can happen. I mean, that, that can happen. You know, a three-fight losing streak, you know, I mean. Let's not get carried away and say he's an up-and-comer now. Huh, who? I, Michael Johnson? Yeah. Well, he's only, like, 25 years old. Uh, yeah, but still, I mean. 
this is a good win, but mm, let's see in his next fight. I, I I don't know. Like I said, yeah, you're right. Maybe he's a little young, but at the same time, it's yeah. like. I guess, yeah, well, he's on. I mean, he's only 25. I mean, if he was 35, no, but you know, he's still really young in his career. And here's the thing: the reason why, if you watch a lot of Michael Johnson fights, you actually notice improvement it, uh, from fight to fight. And even even here, those like hitting those crosses all the time. Mm-hmm. I forgot his southpaw. That was a big improvement. So, oh yeah. That you know, in that in that sense, I mean, I don't really. If he's showing improvement, I don't really see why he wouldn't be a prospect, an up and comer. You know what I mean? That's what they. That's what prospects do. They get better. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, he should just fight like more uh, mid or lower tier guys in the division, really. And Joe Lozon, give him whatever you want. He <laughs> just has fun fights. I mean, seriously, you can just give him. You can give him a cent, like. Uh, John McDessie or Ed- Edson Barboza or uh, Darren Crookshank or, or whoever. You know, whoever you want to give him, he'll have a fun fight with him. Okay, on to the prelims. Michael McDonald beat Brad Pickett Yay. by trying to choke in the second round. Man, how, what, do you think, <laughs> what do you think about that try? Man, that, that try. What do you think about this whole fight? fight? Yeah. <laughs> What is it's fantastic. Just blew me away. I mean, I know there was a world of, uh, you know, excitement when this fight was uh, booked. And in, no offense, I'm starting to think in retrospect, why wasn't this on the main card? Because this was a fantastic fight. It was a fantastic fight against two guys. One guy that are in arguably the top five of the division, but definitely in the top ten. Um, I don't know why this wasn't on the main <laughs> card. And this could probably should have been over, on the main card over Howard versus Hall. Well, yeah. on paper, that should have been a, a lot bigger deal. I, yeah. Like I said, I can understand where UFC is coming from as far as doing that. And mm-hmm. like I said, they had a lot of stock in the guy. But still, this is a fantastic fight. Just to just to give on a on a prelims, it's like, mm. well, you know, to the credit, the 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 thing is, it's a prelim, but like. It's all on Fox Sports One, anyways. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's yeah, but for really, those yeah. that were watching, that they came for the main card. I mean, that, the that fight just mm, just missed it. Yeah, but uh, speaking of fight, man, I mean uppercuts. Ooh. I mean just flurries. Ooh. I mean everything was hitting its mark on um. Bra- oh, excuse me, Brad Pickett. <laughs> I'm about to sneeze. I mean, to stop it, and then. You know, that trying to choke, man, he just waited, waited, slapped on choke, arm bar combination, Ooh. rolled him over, tapped. I mean, the way he had to tap, too, he had to tap like this, you know? <laughs> I mean, seriously. Poor guy. Red Pick gets a good fighter. He's a fun fighter. No kidding. But um, super good chin, but he's always... But he, he defensively, he's not a he's not great defensively. He definitely wings a lot of punches, high pace, always pushing forward, and he, he's good in that role. Um, but because of that, he's probably not going to be a contender. Yeah, you're right. uh, Michael McDonald, on the other hand, uh, man, future champion. What do you think? Oh yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. Twenty two years old, count, excellent counter punching, just accuracy, just. Composure, uh, his ground game. I mean, it's all there, man. That's man, this, this is like I said. This is my fight of the night right here. Yeah, it was a good fight, man. And McDonald just beat him up too. I mean, that was a case of just like hitting him in the face and not getting hit. <laughs> you know, exactly. Good stuff. Uh, McDonald. You know, I mean, so you can fight next. I was thinking Faber, but uh, if not Faber, um, and he lost to Burrell before this. Ah, hmm. uh, jeez, at one thirty. See, one thirty-five is so desolate right now <laughs> that, like, I guess you can go with a guy like a TJ Dillashaw or Rafael Sunsal, uh, or Scott Jorgensen. Ah, uh, jeez, I don't even know who's up there. You know, besides like, because a lot of one thirty top one thirty fivers went down to one twenty-five, like Demetrius <laughs> Johnson and Joseph Benavides, and some up and comers too, like John Dodson. So it's really hard to say at 135 who you give them. You know, it's it's a relatively thin division at no this point. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, maybe McDonald versus Wineland. Um, yeah, if anything, it'll be fun. Yeah. But pick it just more like top 10 guys. You, you just have fun fights. 
Hey, you didn't get to see any of these fights, huh? No, I did not. I came right in the middle. I'm not right in the middle. I kept. Uh. I, I walked right in, in like a minute or two within the McDonald Pickett fight. So. Yeah. Well, Conor McGregor, he beat Max Holloway in man's decision. And uh, leading up to this card, he had the most hype out of any fighter on this card. He rode in a Ferrari, I guess, <laughs> with uh, Dana White. <laughs> and the crowd in Boston cheer. I mean, he's Irish, obviously. Yeah, no kidding. Cheered for the guy. Fighting style wise, he he's very fun. He'll throw a lot of flashy kicks, very ah. accurate puncher, and in the third round showed off his wrestling game. I even passed Max Holloway's. <laughs> Irishman showing off his wrestling skills, which is yeah. so weird. <laughs> um, you know, I would like to see Conor McGregor fight a guy like a Dennis Bermudez next, because one thing is with any prospect in the UFC, especially if they they they're strikers, primary strikers. You always want to know, oh, how good is he going to do against a wrestler? Rapper, yeah. That's always a question. Now it's time to figure it out. McGregor beat Bridge, he beat Holloway. I say Bermudez because he's a wrestler. You go with a guy like a Darren Alkins as well. He's pretty high up there. Um, and Bermudez is coming off a win over Max Holloway anyway, so it makes sense, you know? There's a lot of hype behind Conor McGregor. I... Don't know yet if it's totally justified, but he definitely showed that the potential's there. Uh, Max Holloway is only 21 years old, just getting more lower to major guys of the division. He quitted himself relatively well, but uh, McGregor, for the most part, would beat him to the punch a lot of times. Holloway would get some clean shots in there, but not as much as McGregor. Yeah, next right after that, Steven Slaughter beat Matt, uh, Mike Brown by uh, KO in the first round in 50 seconds. Mike Brown might want to retire. He actually retired, took a year off. That's and, right. I remember that. Yeah. And then he came back to fight Steven Siler, who KO'd him in 50 <laughs> seconds. Uh, you know, and Mike Brown's one in his late 30s, former WEC champion, has a lot of mileage. I don't know what you do with the guy. You know, he's just kind of... That he's losing to mid-tier guys. He's also having a hard time. You know, even in wins, he doesn't look great against some of these mid-tier guys. Against, like, Pineda or Nam Fan. I mean, he was losing rounds, you know. So there's just that guy who... I mean, he got out-wrestled by Elkins. Looked good against Holabot. You know, ever-improving. Total dark horse of the division. Still in his late, you know, late 20s. Trains out of good camp. Slight more lower to major guys of the division. Tricky. He has a tricky ground game. You know, just he's that prospect that totally flew under the radar after the Ultimate Fighter. No one thought anything of this guy. Well, except that he beat one like both of the Millers, and now he's just a guy who's like five and one in the UFC. You know, I mean, he has a good UFC record or four and one or something like that. Next one after that, Diego Brando beat Daniel Pineda by unanimous decision. Both these guys are rough because of each other, and they both have really crappy cardio. <laughs> um, Diego Brando was resigned to uh, wrestle his way to victory in the third round. Um, he does have a really good ground game, and Pineda's really sneaky, but and he takes a lot of risk. They're very much the same guy. Um... The thing with Brando, though, he's just better. Better striker, better wrestler, probably better at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. If Brando can figure out his cardio issues and his pacing issues, he could be a top 10. As of right now, though, he's going to be stuck in the mid-tier having, ha- having a hard time against mid-level fighters. You know, probably beating some, probably beating others, but having a hard time. Uh, Pineda's just kind of like that fun fighter. He wins with some, he'll lose some. Hopefully they keep him. I always like him. Uh, next one after that, Manny Garibarian beat Cole Miller by unanimous decision. Uh, there were some arguments with this fight because Cole Miller did more damage, but uh, Manny Garibarian won with control. Both these guys, I mean, they're just kind of lower to mid-tier guys at this point. They're not super special. You know, Cole Miller has fun, relatively fun fights. He goes for broke a lot of times. So I'll probably keep him, but he loses a lot more than he wins, especially at 145. 
Gambarian, you know, I mean, he's not going to replicate his success that he had in, say, like the WEC or even, like, after top, uh, the Ultimate Fighter. He'll just be stuck in the lower to mid tier. Okay, next round after that, Event St. Pru beat Cody Donovan by KO in the first round. So, as you can tell, there are a lot of good finishes in <laughs> the, the undercard as well. I can imagine. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you know, OSP, you know, he was going to get taken down, kept the wizard, reversed, and postured up, and just threw a bunch of left hands. It was all left hands, and knocked out Cody Donovan with ground and pound from the guard. OSP, very athletic guy, still has defensive holes. He's 30, so I don't know if I can really call him a prospect. He still is, and he, he's still improving, So, but he's an older prospect. Um... And light heavyweight, that, that division at this time <laughs> needs prospects. Bad. I mean, John Jones is way up there and he's awesome, but he's been beat. I mean, he's beat everyone from like Shogun to Pachita to Evans. And there's not a lot of, too many young guns coming up in that division. So it's like a Phil Davis and, a, and Augustus in, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh,. Yeah, so I just give Ovan St. Peru, OSP, some more lower to mid-tier guys. And finally, James Vick, uh, James Vick beat uh, <laughs> Ramsey Nijem by uh, guillotine choke in the first round. Uh, before this fight, Nijem got knocked out cold by Myos Jerry, and now he just got guillotine choked by a guy who made his UFC debut. I think he might be cut, to be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> he has way too many defensive holes. In his arsenal, James Vick is really tall for the division. He's really lanky, and he used it really well in this fight. I'm curious to see where he goes from here. So that's pretty much it for our post-fight analysis for UFC Fight Night 26, Sun In versus Shogun. Oh, well, we plug you in our podcast, man. Ooh, if you yeah. don't mind. Yeah. Yes, I have a comic book podcast at ComicConversations.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, just if you're into comic books and uh, and also MMA, I guess we're we're really cool because we like two awesome things. But um, and pro wrestling. Oh yeah, a thing. We're also going to be starting our uh, pro wrestling podcast as well this week. A yet to be mm-hmm. determined title, but yes, we, Dude. we did our episode zero last week. Can I be in? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you know. Um, yeah. so like I said, we do we've been doing comics for a while. If you love comics, it's a fantastic show. We talk all the week's comics. We tend to lead heavily towards Marvel, but every now and then we'll, we'll read a DC book, especially the Vertical Line series. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it's a fantastic show if you're really into comic books and you want something to, to a podcast, especially, like I said, this is a video cast, so it's not necessarily um, our cup of tea, but we also have a lot of our shows on YouTube as well. I haven't uploaded the last show. But um, if you if you love podcasts, love comic books, we are your podcast because we review comics books every single week. Nice, man. Awesome. And then you'll start doing pro wrestling, huh? Yes. Nice, man. We did our episode zero last week with me and my uh, co-host, Little Robo. Our third, our third my uh, second co-host is back from Japan. So we're going to be talking everything from the G1. And then basically with SummerSlam around the corner, we're going to be previewing that as well. Nice, man. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a very busy man between your show, my comic book show, my pro wrestling show. <laughs> nice, man. Well, cool. Well, that's it for MMA for you then. Thank you guys very much.